What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 5, Take Me Down to Paradise City. I don't know what Paradise City they were talking about in the title because I felt like uh, we were in the pits of hell with this uh, particular episode because it got really uncomfortable. Um, let's start off with Orion and Lauren. So they're spending time at the pool. They're getting to know each other better. Everything is going so well between them. Orion tells her that he wants her to feel safe and she tells us in her confessional that the one thing her mother told her was when you choose a man make sure that you choose a man that makes you feel safe and secure and Orion seems like he he is that guy so it's like okay check on that so they both agree that they want to have only one child and then they're open to adopt another that's a very beautiful thing they're on the same page with that as far as you know children and how they're going to come about these children they're both in agreement with that it seems like like. So then he tells her that she has a very warm aura about her, right? And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going so well between Orion and Lauren. Um, Orion tells us that as the feelings between him and Lauren are growing, so is the chemistry, right? So then the next time that we see them, they're on the hammock. They start off by having a conversation about gender roles and they both are not really strict on the whole gender role thing. Um, Lauren says that, you know, she's not going to be that type of wife that's going to be like, oh, I got to be home by a certain time to have dinner ready for my man when he comes home. But there are going to be times where she's just, she is going to want to cook for him. She just, you know, she wants to play that domestic part and she would, would love, she would love to cook for him. But I think she just doesn't want to have that pressure because she's the woman or because she's the wife that she has to do all of the domestic things. And so they're both are not like really strict on the whole gender role thing. That's going to be very loosey goosey with them on that. Then they talk about finances and Orion says that he wants to be the provider. He says he wants it to be like 70, 30, right? Where he does the majority of the, um, the financial support of their dynamic. And of course, Lauren is down with that. Now I did catch, Orion say that he's not there yet or he eventually will get there <laughs> that, that, at that 70 30 where he is the provider he ain't there yet so maybe she'll have to do the 70 he'll do the 30 for now but he wants to work his way towards that so then they started kissing right and when they started kissing it was you know very heated it was very passionate and not in the sense of it being really sloppy and tonguing each other down it was very soft, gentle kissing, but you could tell that there was definitely passion between them. And it made me think that there was no way that they were going to leave Mexico without consummating this marriage, right? I was like, they are definitely going to be, you know, doing the damn thing later on at some point before they leave Mexico. Well, honey, I spoke too damn soon. The next time that we see Lauren and Orion, um, they're having a conversation, a very intense conversation. And it started off by Lauren asking Orion, if he had ever used the n-word and Orion admitted that yes he has used the n-word but it was when he was really ignorant he didn't know any better and he would use it you know singing along to songs until his mother uh told him that that's just really inappropriate you don't use that word ever it's very disrespectful etc so he didn't know any better but when he knew better he did better right so then she said that she may have used derogatory terms and then she kind of thought about it and she was like mm. and then he goes oh like the term redskin and she jokingly said that because she was kind of laughing a little bit. She was like, oh, I don't even know what that means. And then she stopped herself and she looked at him and then she goes, I do. And then she stopped herself again as if she was about to say, oh, I do now. Like something about him or his face made her realize what that term could have come from or where that term, what that term meant. Because she was like, oh, um, I don't even know what that word means. And she's like, oh, I do. And then she stopped herself. I felt like she was about to say, I do now. Um, but I can't confirm that. So when that happened, his whole entire mood completely changed. His body got tense. His face completely dropped. Like he was like, no longer in a good mood. He was no longer like jokey, jokey. Let's have a conversation. Let's just shoot the breeze. He got real serious real quick when that happened. So, um, 
He tells her, do you know where that term came from? The term red skin, do you know where it came from? And she was like, no, I actually don't. And he goes, do you want me to explain it to you? And she was like, yes, by all means. So he explains to her where the term came from. And it's a very horrible, disgusting history of that word. And I can't believe that the NFL um, allowed a team to be called that for as long as that team was called that. That just blows my mind. So um, he explains to her what it meant. And she said that um, she she did acknowledge that, you know, that's really, that's very tragic. That's disgusting. I can't believe people. So she acknowledged, you know, how horrible that treatment was um, towards, you know, Native Americans. And so she said that as a black person, you know, she has heard, she, she's heard black people be the butt of many jokes. She's heard a lot of derogatory terms about black people and that she's just learned to develop thick skin. And he says to her, well, that's where you and I differ because with me, if I'm going to hear anything derogatory, um, about my people, I'm going to confront it head on. Um, and so then they talk about Cameron because, um, when they were on their way to the airport and this was the scene that they showed showed last week when the group was on their way to the airport and they were all in the bus together. Um, Cameron was telling the group that, Hey, we're going to Mexico. We have to be aware of our surroundings. Um, so we have to stay close to, he said reservation when he meant to say resort. So when he said reservation, of course, Orion was like, excuse me, what did you just say? And so someone had to correct Cameron and say, no, you don't say reservation. You mean, you mean resort. And Cameron was like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And so Orion kind of brushed it off as okay, you know, you're being ignorant. He says something like, I, I can see, I can tell what ignorant is when I see it, or I can see ignorant, whatever he said, basically saying you're ignorant. You don't know any better. So then, um, Lauren says, well, I noticed that you handled Cameron, a white man, a little bit differently than the way you're handling me, a black woman. Um, and she meant that with um, Cameron, you just kind of brushed it off as, oh, he's ignorant. He didn't know any better. And you moved on. But then with me, you're getting tense. Your face is looking really upset, you know, and it's like, you're kind of getting more on my case and holding me to the fire. And we were just as ignorant. And then Orion said, well, red skin and reservation are two completely different things. And so she was like, you know, but I, I just didn't know or whatever she said. So it seemed like the conversation was about to go left because she was kind of like, you know, you're treating me differently than you treated him. And we were both just as ignorant. And he was coming from the standpoint of you can't compare the two it's apples and oranges. What you said was a whole lot worse or, or your reaction to that word or whatever it was, it was a whole lot worse than him, you know, misusing a word. So I guess they both got the sense that things were not going in the right direction. So they both decided to kind of like de deescalate. She kind of just was like, okay, yeah, I understand. And he was like, okay, fine. You know, so they were both trying to like bring everything down again, but there has clearly been a crack in this relationship. Now, the, the thing that I've noticed is, and I'm trying to understand is both of them were very open to being matched with people of a different race, of a different color, excuse me, they saw this as an advantage to be matched with someone of a completely different culture. So it's weird to me as much as they love their own cultures and as open as they are to others, why now are they like on opposite sides of the line? Why now are they acting as if like they're kind of like being a little bit combative with one another? I'm not going to say they're acting like enemies, but does Orion truly believe that Lauren would knowingly say that word like knowing like she like would she knowingly had said that word or has she would she had knowingly acted the way she did if she really did know the history you know she was just as ignorant as Cameron and yes those were two completely kind of different scenarios but he kind of was treating her as if she should have known better I don't know if you felt like, well, you're a minority and you know what it's like. So, you know, you should have known better than to not understand what that word meant or to not know the history of that word or to not really realize the impact of that word. 
Whereas with Cameron, he was just like, oh, he's, he's ignorant. He's stupid. He doesn't know any better. So I was just kind of surprised like on how angry he was because he was angry, how angry he was at Lauren and Lauren was showing herself as really trying to learn and really trying to correct himself because I felt like when he said that he had used the N word, I felt like another black person would have held him to the fire and would have been like, you should really know that it's never cool for someone to say that word. I mean, he really could have been like really put in the hot seat. I felt like if it was any other black person, but she was kind of like, oh, you didn't know any better, but now you do. So it's cool. And she even joked about, can I punch you for my ancestors? And I just said, I don't, because the N word and, you know, that word as well that people would use for indigenous people, they're both very, very, very problematic. So like she was kind of giving him grace, whereas he was like very upset with her and treating her as if that, you know, she should never had made that type of a mistake or I don't know. I just felt like it was a little bit unbalanced, a little bit uneven. I think that because they should know each other enough, well, how can they know each other enough? They just met, but I don't really know Lauren either, but I don't think that she's the kind of person who would have been so flippant once she was taught the history of that word. You know, some people would have been like, oh, I didn't know. And just kind of been like, whatever. But she was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that that's where that word came from. And, you know, how how horrible, how awful. Um, like she really took it to heart. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. But there's definitely a crack in that relationship now. And it's just really sad. And I felt like both of them both have the wherewithal and the intelligence to really get through this. But I feel like Orion may not allow her to get off so easily. But we'll see. There's going to be a whole nother mess in next week's episode, according to the teaser. But we'll see. So moving on from there, we have Claire and Cameron. Claire and Cameron are struggling. They are struggling hard and can't Claire is just not into this guy. And it's going to be, there's always a couple where one of them struggles with attraction. And I think it's going to be Claire and Cameron. Um, I feel like Cameron is trying to make it work. I feel like Cameron, now he's, there's been some bumps in the road. He hasn't been perfect by far, but I feel like he is more willing to try than she is. I think she puts on a front like she's trying, but she really ain't. Because when they had the dinner, everything was, you know, somewhat okay, somewhat fine up until the dinner. So when they were sitting down for dinner, she had asked him if he believed in therapy. And he was like, of course, yeah, I believe in therapy. And I think she asked him, have you ever been to therapy? And he said, yes, as a child, but never as an adult. And she was like, why not? And Cameron was like, I don't need to go to therapy right now. I'm very content and happy with my life. And she's like, well, I disagree with that. You disagree with what? The fact that he's content with his life. He doesn't feel the need to go to therapy. And so she's like, well, I disagree with that. Um, I, th I think everybody would ben benefit from therapy. Yes, they do when they need it, but not everybody needs it all the time. So she seemed like to take offense or to pretend to take offense. It's like now she's just trying to find excuses to cause a division between them. So she's like, well, everybody needs to go to therapy. And he's like, yeah, I agree. But I don't need to go right now because, you know, I'm really cool with my life. So then they talk about drive. Um, I don't remember, like, how did that conversation start? Um, I don't remember how it started, but she, they talk about drive. And um, he's, he says that everything that he's ever wanted in life just kind of like fell in his lap. He really didn't have to work for it. And she was like, oh, interesting. So you don't believe in, you know, working hard for the things that you want. And he was like, no. <laughs> And I thought he meant no, because you can get the things that you want without working hard. And she was like, well, that's where we differ. We are so different on that. So, and I think he got confused again with her, just like he was confused with her stand on, um, on a physical touch where one minute she's like, she's against it, but then she's not against it, but then she is, but then she's not. And so he was like, okay, she's like, yeah, we're very different on that. I don't know what we're going to do to get over this. 
Get over what? Girl, you're just trying to create something out of nothing. Like she's really trying to put a division between them so she can have an excuse not to sleep with him. Because I think he started off by saying, you know, things were going really great. And, um, you know, maybe things are going to get better later on. I think he was kind of hinting that you know, this is what he's kind of looking forward to, you know, them consummating their marriage. And now she's brought up this whole therapy thing. And now she's turned off that he doesn't have any drive. And I remember there was a scene where they talked about him and his bike. So he, own, he owns a, bi a bike repair shop. And she asked him, so that seems, she said something like, well, that seems really repetitive, you know, just fixing bikes all day. And he was like, well, no, because not every bike breaks in the same way. So they get into this deep discussion about bikes and how they break and how they fix them and what bikes mean to people and she says to him well it seems like you really love your job and he's like yeah I do love my job because it's more than just about the bike because you know in Colorado or in Boulder wherever they're wherever he's from he says you know people are really into their bikes because their bike is a way for them to escape and blah 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 so their bikes mean a lot to them and when I'm able to fix it I'm bringing happiness to this part there's this long drawn-out conversation about bikes and how what bikes mean to people and so I was thinking that maybe she was probably like not really feeling where he was coming from kind of like oh okay so you're always going to be happy just fixing bikes for the rest of your life okay but she was polite enough to say that you know I think it's really cool that you love your job and you know it doesn't matter about the money as long as you're happy doing whatever you're doing so they're they're just on the struggle bus she's not feeling him he's really trying with her and she's just trying to like she you know she's done moving on to um Emily and Brennan so Emily and Brennan hmm I'm not really sure where they're headed and what's going on with them. So everything started off really fine. You know, they had breakfast together. They talked about how they're basically really driven by money. Um, just the bottom line, they're driven by money. They want to make a lot of money as much as they can. Money drives them and they want to save a lot of money and they want to be able to live a certain type of lifestyle. And they both are in agreement with that for sure. So... They go tequila tasting and Emily held her own with that tequila. She held her own. They went tequila tasting and they were like just knocking out, knocking out those shots left and right. And she mentioned something about how she had gone to a party school. Her, um, her university was like a party school and she was definitely that party girl. And once again, whenever she talks about her, you know how she's that party girl and you know, she was really like, uh, you know, living it up in college. And he kind of has this look on his face, kind of like he's trying to figure her out. Like, hmm, is this what I really want? That That's what it seems like to me. That's what it seems like to me. He said that he wasn't the partying type, but of course he did enjoy, you know, quite a few parties when he was in college, but he wasn't like, you know, that much into that party scene. So then after that, um, Brandon says that the attraction is definitely building between them. Um, Oh, wait, I'm sorry. They go to the tequila taste and then they go to the beach. So when they're on the beach, they're having a conversation and Emily asks him about how does he feel about sex? And he says that there is definitely an attraction building between us. And then Emily says, well, I'm just going to go ahead and let you take the reins on that I'm going to take you I'm going to let you take the lead on that which is weird because I'm married at first sight we're used to the man telling the woman I'm going to let you take the lead on that but here's a woman telling a man that he's going to be the one in charge of when and if that happens so then he says that he doesn't want sex to cloud anything the same thing that Orion had told Lauren it's like I really don't want sex to really cloud anything like I want to I want us to I guess he's trying to say that he wants them to have like a solid foundation where they know that they really want to be with one another before they go into that realm because you know if you do it too soon you lose interest everything begins to fizzle out so I guess he wants to um, make sure that when it happens that he's not going to quickly lose interest in her afterwards because he's gonna he wants to do it when he knows that he really really does like her um, yeah it's just they're, they're yeah 
that's what's going on with them. So I'm not really sure if he's feeling her because sometimes, you know, maybe he's not really in a guy could not be interested in a woman, maybe physically. And so he'll come up with that excuse of let's get to know each. I don't know y'all. I'm just jumping the gun. I don't really know. I guess he really is. He really wants to build a solid foundation with her. Moving on to Becca and Austin. Not much to say with Becca and Austin other than they're doing great. They get the gold star of the week. Becca and Austin get the gold star of the week. They are really into each other. They're very present for one another. There was a scene when um, they were at the pool. Only Austin was in the pool, but Becca was not. She was sitting on the side and it was because she wasn't feeling well. And the cold water, you know, does something to her, uh, to her body that gives her more pain. So he was very understanding. She felt really guilty about not being in the pool with him and having fun with him. And he was like, no, 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 don't worry about that. I totally understand. So they were still able to like have to spend time with one another um, without her having to be in the pool. That was really sweet. So I don't have nothing negative to say about Becca and Austin. Um, Becca seems to be really into Austin. She seems to be really, really, really into him. I love how she looks at him because she looks at him like she really likes this guy. And um, Austin, to me, is giving off the signs that he is really into her as well. So yeah, they did really well this week. And that's my review. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.